Hey guys, my name is Adam Furness and welcome to Basically Python. In this series of lectures, I will be teaching you the very basics of Python and you can go from zero to hero. And then we can start going to an intermediate scale in Python. Now, what will we learn in these series? I have segregated the section into four parts, mainly novice in which we, where we will look um, the data types loops conditional statements and even lambda expressions now the first three things data types loops and conditional statements um, you will be familiar with it if you have already learned the programming language now lambda expression is something which is unique to python so we'll be learning about that in this section now the next section is for the beginners who have some level of programming knowledge. Um, we'll be seeing functions, regular expressions and exception handling in this section. Now th comes the intermediate section. Now I have divided the intermediate section into two parts, mainly intermediate one, where we will learn OOPS or object oriented programming, um, which you will be familiar with if you have learned C++ or any language which has object oriented programming and also file handling which means basically we will see how to collect information from text files or even i'll show you how to collect information from pdfs or other documents now in intermediate 2 we are going to learn database handling where we will learn how to work with sql databases and we will learn graphical user interface which is gui now um I have coupled database handling and GUI in one section because of the sole purpose that they go hand in hand. That means you can create GUI applications to handle the databases that you're going to create and fetch information, retrieve information, store information um, in the database that you have created. Now, uh, so we are going to see all of this. But there are some prerequisites that you have to perform before um, starting with the lectures now the first thing and the basic thing that you have to do is install Python I recommend installing Python 3.4 or any higher version but 3.4 will also be okay as we have more things such as PYQT which is a designer for GUI available in 3.4 but if I find um, a designer which is compatible for higher versions I will definitely show you that now the second thing is uh, optional, not a rudimentary, but it's an optional thing, which I basically recommend everyone that is to install Jupyter. Now Jupyter is a platform where it provides us um, notebook, a uh, sort of a notebook, which where we can, uh, you know, uh, write single line commands and even multi line programs at ease, and we can do it everything. It's like a debugging environment for us that we can write line by line or without um, executing the entire code, we can go line by line of coding and then we can convert it into a .py file so that we'll get uh, a Python program. Now, what are the steps to install Jupyter Notebook? Firstly, we will have to open the command prompt. I will actually show you what steps are to be taken for installing the Jupyter Notebooks. Now, just a theoretical thing this is that we have to open the command prompt and type the following command pip install jupyter lab after a successful installation that means when the jupyter install installation has been completed uh, make a different folder in any path you like and type jupyter notebook and the notebook will be started now i'll show this to you practically and for that i'll be stopping the video for now and i'll show you once I open my command prompt, all right? Okay, so I have my command prompt ready with me now. And uh, um, the default folder which opens is the C users admin folder. Now, if you have Python already installed in your system, uh, this command pip, pip is a Python oriented command. So, um, 
you know uh, sort of you need to install python before executing this command so that's a very rudimentary thing that you have to install python to execute any commands for python itself so that's logical okay so pip install jupyter lab this is the command we are going to um enter over here to install our jupyter which has all this laboratory and where you can create different you know you can create scripts you can create notebooks etc etc now i have already installed jupyter lab in my system and that's why it will say that requirement already satisfied but for for those people who haven't installed jupyter it will take about 20 to 25 minutes to install it and if you face any sort of errors or any issues while installing you can definitely comment down in the comments section i'll be most happy to help you um, to solve the errors now um, as it gets um, installed you have to just specify a folder where you want to open the notebook or open the script uh, a notebook is basically a, a platform where you can create all this python codes and all that so you have to specify a folder to you know where you'll store all these notebooks now i'm choosing e and i already have a um jupyter uh, uh, a directory for jupyter files i've already created it and you can just if you haven't created any files or folders you can just create it by specifying um mkdir and then put your directory's name all right um so the thing is that once you have created this folder you have to just write jupyter notebook that's it and um it will preferably install on uh it will preferably start a local host server which redirects to your google chrome now i have made the settings that it should start with my own browser because I don't use Google Chrome and that is the reason why it will open in my um, you know default browser which is not now if you can see here it is is it is being written that the notebook list is empty that means there is no notebook previously present in this folder so to in order to create we have to click new over here and um, click on python 3 now it will open a new notebook which in which we can write now you will be able to see what's the look and feel of these um, jupyter notebooks now we won't be starting with the lecture this time i'm just showing how to use jupyter notebooks so that you will be the next time you enter the the lecture enter for the lecture you will definitely know the basics of how to use a jupyter notebook and again it's not compulsory to use a jupyter notebook you can just use an ide which comes with the python pre-installed you can just type ide and this is what i was talking about ide i have python 3.9 but it's not necessary if you install python 3.9 you can even install python 3.4 or any version you want um, this is the ide you can use even this to write uh, programs but I don't personally believe using this because um, you have to always save it again you have to create a new file every time you um, write a program and everything like that 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 is why I don't recommend using this all right so I wouldn't be using IDLE but if you want uh, you can definitely use IDLE or any um, IDEs that are you know that you prefer now uh, this is the look and feel of what a jupyter notebooks uh, look like now it is basically the first time you start a notebook a new notebook it will uh, show that it's untitled so in order to change the title i'll just click file and a rename to rename it um, i'll just say first underscore oh okay it just i click enter and it already um you can again rename it obviously it's not that hard first dot underscore introduction right so 
that is the naming convention i use i usually put dates after that but this is just for the look and feel of jupyter notebook so i won't be specific any date but in the upcoming lectures i will be specifying dates on which i make this video so don't get confused if you think that why is it is not the date which you are viewing the lecture on because it will be a date <laughs> on which i recorded the video so basically yes this is it and you can write any functions like print hello world which is the basic the most basic program that every programmer writes and once you click shift enter now you have to click shift plus enter in order to execute in this jupyter lab um sorry my, uh, my bad i mean i made a mistake um a jupyter notebook so you have to click shift enter for it and um, that's it so this is this was a small introduction um to jupyter notebooks and introduction to python from the next series i'll be starting with the data types and conditional statements and loops in python and um you'll be learning everything from scratch so that i don't um, i don't want to make uh, it complicated for everyone who is learning or every beginner or who doesn't have even a, a, a knowledge in programming um so anyone with any background can come over here and learn so if you like this video please click a like uh, please subscribe uh, it helps us a lot it motivates me to make more and more videos um, and even in future i'll make videos on advanced python so thank you so much for watching